this also sort of depends on how much everyone knows about, you know, like our studio is very, very basic on like, you know, this is that and things go here. Um, so um, I can sort of skip over things or, you know, if uh, people want more explanations on certain things, then um, we can do that. Uh, all right. So let me start sharing my screen. Hopefully it's all of them. Okay. Can you see the the shared slides? Yeah, it's visible. Okay, perfect. So today we're working on workflow <clears throat> basics. So chapter three, um, our learning ob objectives are just to understand the RStudio interface, um, use the R command line boldly and uh, follow good style conventions when writing code and then also confidently call functions in R, okay? So just uh, as a little tour um, and then we'll actually go into our studio right so this is the console pane and it's um sort of like um you also have a terminal tab but this is where you know like any kind of outputs of whatever it is that you're doing will show up right um we'll go into a little bit more detail uh sorry this is there we go uh then the script pane is you know your script editor where you can write um, different kinds of R files, like either scripts or markdown files, which are two different kinds. Um, those are the most common ones that I've used. I'm sure that others have used, you know, either Quarto or many of the other types of output files. Um, uh, the environment pane um, has several little tabs like environment history, connections, your Git stuff like GitHub connection will also show up here, but it's mostly where, you know, your, your variables and other things are stored. And then finally, um, the other pane, right? Uh, it has uh, the files for the directory or folder or project folder that you're in, right? And then like a plots tab where things that you're plotting from the script editor will appear. Packages this is also where the help is, you know, um, if you search for help on any function or data set, it'll appear here. And then some other extra things that, you know, you'll you'll get acquainted as you start working with R. Okay, let me minimize this. Okay, now can you see my R studio? Uh, yes, yes. Perfect, okay. So this is essentially what I'm showing you here in the script pane is just the markdown file for the book down page that we just saw. And I've, I've edited a little bit. And so, um, you know, it's a markdown file because it ends in .rmd. And a cool thing is like, you'll see it looks very nice, right? Like the text looks good. And then you have chunks where you're running things. But here you can also toggle between, this is the, so the visual output of the actual markdown file. And this is what the source looks like, right? So this is like, you're very, I guess like raw, um, Markdown has like a header, then it has, you know, chunks to run our code. And then in between, it's got all of this writing essentially, right? But for example, these things like the, the hashes are things that um, control, like I'll show you, for example, this hash and then this double hash and then these like dashes actually tell our to display it as, you know, um, kind of like a HTML, I think. I'm not super familiar with these things, but that's what I've heard, right? So this is like a, a title, makes the font big, and I guess aligns it on the page. And then like what you saw as dashes, right, in the source are now bullets. And so there's ways to actually um, specify all of that in the source so that it looks in a, in a specific way. And then um, if you enter in the visual, again, um, you'll see all of these formatted. And for example, you know, like this is another special formatting. Um, there's also a lot of uh, mathematical formulas. I, I forgot to put an example in this one, but you can see, you know, what the actual formula that you specify in source and then what the uh, markdown file output is through this source visual. So I'm just gonna continue in this uh, visual display because it's a little bit nicer and easier on the eyes but sometimes I don't know why it gets stuck and it doesn't run chunks properly so in that case I may just switch to to the source um okay so we went through the learning objectives uh with an overview of pains okay so now we're using the console right the console is this thing down here um okay so 
conceptually everything we do in R is a series of commands, right? And the console is where we can enter these commands. So by default entering thing, right, means you print out a thing. So right here is we entered four and the console is printing out the value four, right? Um, R has some predefined named objects like pi. So if we run this chunk, there's pi, the value. Also, what's nice about Markdown is that the chunks and you know whatever is appearing in the console will also appear right here. So for example, if you go to source um, and you run this, oh, never mind. Yeah, it, it does it as well. I'm sorry, I was confusing Markdown with the actual just R script. Um, okay, and then this they say this one is surprisingly useful. You put letters and it gives you back the letters of the alphabet. Okay, so using the console, what it means to print out a thing, right? Depends on what kind of a thing it is. So here we're calling the function ggplot2, and this is a data set within ggplot. So let's just run this. And you can see it is a very large table with, you know, all of these columns and information about, you know, different, I guess, 53,940 rows, information on, on diamonds, right? So if you ever wanted to know, like, what ggplot is or, you know, what even diamonds is, you could put a question mark and then the thing, right? And that'll get you the help. So ggplot is, you know, the grammar of graphics and it's for visualizations and we already saw what this is, but in case you've just seen like the ggplot um, colon colon diamonds and you're like, I have no idea what that is, um, you can put it in and it'll show up here in the help panel. Okay, so actually uh, entering thing, right, actually means evaluate and print the thing. So cosine of pi, it's applying the function cosine to the value of pi and then giving you the answer, right? So um, whoever wrote this says, I use R as a desktop calculator a lot. I don't necessarily, but it does come in handy, right? Um, so there's that multiplication. So now assigning names. Um, I have a, a quick question. Are we going too slow? Are you guys just like, well, I know all of this already. Um, yeah, you know, okay. It's good? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, it's okay. Fine. Yeah, yeah. I think I think okay. it's going. You're going fine. Okay. Perfect. Well. Okay. Excellent. So now assigning names, right? So sometimes you don't just want to print out a thing, right? Especially if it's like some kind of complex evaluation or something, right? You want to save it as a named object, right? So that then you can later use it. And so we use this assignment arrow or assignment operator for this. So we are multiplying two times the value of pi, and then that is getting assigned to this variable called tau, right? So you run it, and now the variable appears here in your environment pane. Um, so most programming languages use the equal sign for assignment, and this also works in R. Um, but assignment is really conceptually distinct from a mathematical equality. So um, I, I don't know what the convention is. Um, I've seen it. I've seen enough, you know, I guess coding examples where I've seen both. Um, John Harmon recommends just sticking to this arrow operator because um, I think he said once that when he's debugging and he's looking for variables, it's easy to find the arrows as opposed to, you know, other just equal signs where you might have just had it as an equality in a, like in a function or something like that. Um, so to me, I, I've not seen the advantage or one or the other, but I've just kept that in mind. Um, so it also has a keyboard shortcut, so you have to keep typing the whole thing. So it's Alt and then the the minus uh, key, and then again, you know, objects will show up here in the environment pane. So then assigning and printing. So by default, when you make an assignment, the result of the evaluation is not printed to the console. So to assign and print in one command, you just surround the assignment in parentheses, and now you'll, you should see it. There it is. Okay, so pronouncing code. It's easier to remember, right, and understand a thing if you can say it, like either just out loud or in your head. And this is actually very helpful. So this helped me, you know, like understand better what things were doing, um, especially as a beginner. So a common pronunciation of this arrow, right, is gets. So tau gets this value of two times five. So tau gets two times five. Um, 
So naming things, they say there are only two hard things in computer science, cache and validation and naming things. I have no idea what cache and validation is. I think someone explained it to me, but yes, naming things um, can be, I guess, you know, something that you work on as a process. Um, you wanna pick good names for things um, so that they're descriptive enough, but they're also not, you know, long and cumbersome. Um, having good guidelines for naming things can save you a lot of mental effort down the road, yes, because then you know exactly what the thing is that you had named or you stored. Um, names in R can only contain letters, numbers, uh, underscores, and periods. And R is case sensitive, right? So uh, just be aware of that. And also sticking with good style convention will make your code more readable for yourself and others, um, and also for yourself in the future, right? So um, use things that are descriptive, so not just X, Y, Z, right, or A, B, C. Um, long names are okay. Um, allow, use all lowercase by default with underscore as a separator. So for example, this is um, snake case. That's what it's called. Some people also use your camel case. Uh, I think Hadley recommends this snake case. You, you can do whatever it is that you want, you know. Um, however, it's, it's a bit more readable and intuitive. So, okay, functions. So a function in R is like a function in math, right? It's a box that takes an input and returns some output. So functions can take zero, one, or more than one object as input, right? You call a function, you specify values, so the arguments for the inputs. And then evaluating the function call gives the output of the function. So in this case, we're calling the function length, and we want to know the length of this uh, vector letters. I think it was a vector. So it's telling you 26, right? That's correct for the letters of the alphabet. Or for example, um, for the ggplot example, n row, the function n row will tell you the number of rows for that diamond data set. So 53,940. Okay, so the inputs, so the function parameters have names, right? When you pass the function arguments, you can do so by name. So um, the sequence from one to 10, 10 okay, that's the sequence. Um, specifying names is usually optional, but it can make your code more readable. So it's a good habit to get into. So if you name the arguments, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. Uh, how is this naming the arguments to 10 from one? Okay, I mean, that's the same thing. And if you don't specify, oh, I see. So just the, the from and the to are just naming the, I guess, beginning and end arguments for this sequence function. So here you don't specifically specify the name, um, but the function will match the arguments to the parameters in the order that they appear, right? So this should be the sequence from 10 to one, I'm guessing. Correct, yeah. Okay, so, um, some other RStudio features that you can explore on your own. So the tab autocomplete, um, that's actually kind of useful. Let me um, go to the source here, sorry. Uh, tab autocomplete. So let me just add a new chunk and say DG. So for example, if you start typing DG, whatever, you know, and then press tab, it'll give you either a list of functions or variables that you already have. So you can just select from the list. So we were looking at diamonds at the diamonds data set and here it pulls it up. So you can just return to select. Um, okay, so then um, this type command control up arrow to search history. I've never really used it so let's see command or control and the up arrow i don't know what this is doing sam do you have you used that is it in the console oh maybe it's here yeah it's in the console i'm sorry so if you type control and then your up arrow it brings up you know list of other things that we've typed before. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. Um, if you use Alt, Shift, and K, you can see lots and lots of shortcuts. So Alt, Shift, and K brings you 
all of these keyboard shortcuts. So you can, you know, pick whatever is most useful for yourself. Um, there's very many. Okay, so I'm gonna move on. And then um, this person says one of my recent favorites, the Alt Command down arrow inside a script. So just let's see, I have a script here. Um, so what was it? Alt Command down, um, Alt Command down. Control down or up, I guess. Like it looks like it's selecting something. Sam, do you know what that does? Um, which one? The Alt Control down. See? Or okay, so say that I put it here. So Control Alt and then down arrow. See how it seems to be selecting several lines. I've never used it. Uh, like, I've never. What is that for? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, I, actually, if someone's used it, let me know. Uh, this is very useful. Uh, actually, you can uh, control all the cursor um, at the same time. Oh, uh, okay. So, so you can, for for example, you can change uh, uh, the name of some variable. Uh, all no, icons, like, maybe. Uh, okay. So I think. Oh. Uh, yes. Okay. For example, if the variable for maybe area and I thought uh -huh. it multiple things. I can just oh. do this and when I change the name of variable in one place, it will change it in every other place. Oh, yeah. but you know what? I think that there's a keyboard shortcut for that, which will highlight you the variable, right? I forget no. what it is. It's like um I'm thinking about final not find and yeah I know this feature in this so I don't know it's okay. Oh okay okay Maybe I'll, I'll just uh, play around with it a little bit more because there's a, a specific keyboard shortcut that will, you know, highlight you, for example, right? Like uh, if I had a whatever variable, MPG or something, right? Um, and then it'll highlight every instance and you can just type over it if you want to change the name of that variable. Um, uh, maybe control F will show, show the find and replace uh, dialog. Uh, Control S. Control I'm typing S. it, but it doesn't do it. Maybe it's uh, F. Control F. Oh, Control F. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, but this is just fine. No, no, no. It's it's a different one. Like, um, oh. let me just finish, and then we can go back. Um, okay. So keep that in mind. Okay. So, okay, that was just an example here of the tab autocomplete, and then <clears throat> just a few extra things, right? Um that I sort of found very useful at the very beginning when I, I mean, I still don't know much, but I knew even less, right? So for example, um, if you make a plot, right? Um, and then it'll appear here, right? You can save it from here, like either as an image or a PDF or a copy to the clipboard, right? But then you can also, you know, fiddle around with a, uh, saving it by opening a graphics device, so like PDF or PNG or whatnot, you know, you give it the, the directory and the name and then <clears throat> whatever other things you want to save it with. Then you create the plot, like give it the, the ggplot command and then you close the graphics device. Or you can also, you know, plot first and then dev copy to the PDF and then um, do this dev off. The, the benefit of doing it this way is that it'll actually show up here on the plots, which is what I, I tend to like. Um, because if you just do it this way, so say that you get rid of this plot, right? If you do it like this, it's written it to the location, right? So for me, it's here outputs and it's put out my plot, but I didn't see anything here in the, in the plots window. So if you do it like this, then it'll save it and it should show plots. That was interesting. Why didn't it show it? Hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, it, it did it yesterday. I don't know why. Um, okay. And then the other thing that I found useful as like a beginner is that you can actually um, import things like, for example, I have this sample Excel worksheet, right? 
by using this import data set up here in the environment. Okay. So because it's in Excel, you can just choose like from Excel. Um, and then here it'll give you like the code for importing this. So you just copy this and add it to your script or markdown file later. So it's reading using the read Excel package and then, you know, <clears throat> telling you how it's going to import it. So you have to go through uh, inputs. There we go. And it gives you a preview, right, of all that looks good to me. And then you can just import. And there it is, right? Because I, I remember fiddling around a lot with the commands and then getting very frustrated. And so this, this was very helpful. And uh, there's also, um, it can import all sorts of things, like, for example, uh, CSV files or TSV files. You just got to give it, like, the correct delimiter. And it'll always give you, like, the, the actual command for importing. Um, okay, and then there were just like three super easy exercises that you can do on your own. And that was pretty much it. It's uh, like a very, you know, like brief tour of just like the RStudio ID and what different things do. And then just like uh, a couple tips that were useful for me as a, as a beginner. So any questions? Thank you, Sandra. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> not to be if you I link, then you just find VS Code in um, environment is in um, <clears throat> okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Right. So this is the um, quattro um, mm -hmm. and then the uh, code to um, write our compile content. And yeah, this is the document you already know. So this is my blog and because I'll find out how we do the blog. Okay, I started, but I will not be doing it, but now we have a like that. Exercise. Sam, I can almost not hear you for some reason. Yeah, I am also having the same okay. problem. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, <laughs> okay, yeah, so I said um, um, you can use another environment like VS Code. To use R. Um, so I'm using VS Code here, you can see for my blog. And um, the idea is um, the exercises for this blog, I will be doing some kind of which is like um, I will be sharing in this publicly because I don't learn. So if I'm, you know, and in public, <laughs> um, I will keep doing so. so my the idea is for me to be doing the exercise. And uh, yeah, so R and uh, you can see the plot is here, and you know, um, yeah, basically you can see like when I this, run this, see that, um, I run this, you can see the number of rows. When I run this, you can see that you can do this as well. And yeah, that's just to show you. Yeah. So oh, interesting. So what do you use that exactly for, Sham? So instead of R Studio as your IDE, you use it, but this has other functionality, right? So the this VS Core um uh -huh. is IDE that mm -hmm. is but um is one of the uh, top uh coding environment I think in the world, VS Core. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, because I use Python, so I want to have like um, a single environment, Python mm -hmm. and R. And a lot of people are using BS Core for uh -huh. R. So, oh, okay. Huh. So that's why I just let me check BS Core. Okay. Uh, so, um, you remember last week? 
Um, okay, mm -hmm. let me see. Uh, okay. What can you see now? Uh, what can you see? It says you started screen sharing, but I don't see anything. It's just a, a dark screen. What about now? No, nothing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. I want to see nothing. Okay. Uh, okay. Maybe now. What about now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You remember last week I made mention last time we can, you know, do tidy to but uh -huh. we will be doing not the recent one, we will be using following the app. So the recordings of Yeah, sorry, I think it's like your I don't know, it, it usually six. I don't know where I'm the only one having that problem. Uh can I hear me? Um, yeah, here yeah, we're not very clear at some point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, it's not clear and it's very low. Give me yeah. a second. Yeah. Give me a second. Okay, what about now? Yeah, it's clear now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It's... Yes, what about now? Can you hear me? Sure, sure. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what I was saying is, remember last week we made mention like, um, while going through the book, the best experience we can have is just like let's try practice some of the data set around the world following the tidy tuesday but we said as we just start learning um we may not follow the current tidy tuesday because we will see some people with amazing stuff and we'll be intimidated right because oh i don't know this so we'll just start now doing the you know previously recorded tidy tuesday by um uh david robinson i know you know all of you maybe know, know david robinson um so david robinson is basically um you know one of the top guys in our he did the book uh, tidy text mining with julia Silge. this book um so he does um you know screen cast recording of tidy tuesdays and you can see them like you know this one so for example now we may even start with the newest um tidy tuesday and we can have like um, um you know okay let's assume we can say okay we can do this so people can go and basically you know post the tidy tuesday so there is even timestamp that is for each some of the packages that have been used some there is explanation why they have been used can you see that so there is a timestamp for new stuff that you can see in the um you know in the tidy tuesday screencast so following you know someone doing and you see it and you replicate it so my idea is i would be replicating at least one maybe weekly because it's not hard you can watch it just just to practice um so that's what we discussed last week um <clears throat> So what do you think? Is it a good idea? Maybe some of you might not have been here. What do you think? I, I think it's a great idea. I wonder, like, I, I think that also depends on the level of the people that are here on a weekly basis, right? Because yes. um, I think that for the very, very beginners, which I, today it doesn't seem like anyone is, um, it might be a bit much or, um, I guess it, it depends, like, if you want to do it every week, should we, like, do it aside from the reading and the exercises in the book, and then also work on the Tidy Tuesday, and then we sort of share? Maybe, or... we do, maybe after some few weeks, after we go some through the book, people are, you know, become conversant with art because some people are new to art. Mm -hmm. um, 
then we can just start it. Um, or if we are all familiar with R, but we want to, you know, sharpen our experience, mm -hmm. then we can start mm -hmm. it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's a fantastic idea, Shane. Okay, Hamza and uh, Abu, what is your experience with R? Yeah, it's it's a great idea. Um, I'm in, of course. Uh, actually, I'm pretty familiar with R, and uh, okay, yeah, idea. I think mm -hmm. it's a good idea. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, it, I, I think I'm in for it. I'll do I'm a beginner, like, but I, I just used it uh, casually. Yeah, okay. but I, I think I, 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 can, I can follow along. Okay, so what we can do is um, I will start from the newest because mm -hmm. the newest maybe include, you know, some of the functions which are new, some of the ideas that are new. So we can just go and try doing this, um, which is basically on data cleaning and um, just try to see it, um, share your ideas in the group, ask questions, and we can discuss next week and see whether you find this useful on what we can do better. And what we can do is maybe um, uh, at the last minutes, 10 minutes of each day, we just do some kind of casual uh, chat about the uh, what we watch and you, know, you can share your experience. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's that sounds good. good. But it's oh, but not one call, Sam. So you said newest data set, so whatever it sorts okay. by, right? Yeah, let me share this okay. with you. Yes, it's not necessary. It's just optional for us to practice here. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So sorry if I get you. You mean like uh, during the course of the week, if dice, um, like if we could go through this, and then next week towards the end we could discuss. Yeah. What I mean is now, um, before next week, we should yeah. try to watch this and practice it on ourselves. Yeah. And mm -hmm. when we finish our next chapter, uh, yeah. next week when we do the last minutes, we just, yeah. just do some kind of discussion. How do you find this? Uh, what is something exciting? You know, but we can also keep discussing within the in the Slack um, about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Yes, I think that. Okay. Cool. Cool. I agree. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. So I think uh, today we finish early uh, because the chapter is not that long. Yeah, the chapter was yes. super, super short. Yeah. Uh, so I will um um I will practice. I will do my practice, and I share. I will share it in the Slack so that uh, I will motivate other people. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. Yeah. All right. So. Anyone who comes out, Abdul, you want to add something before we go? No, no, thank you, Sandra and Shamsuddin. Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. thanks. Okay. Yeah, of course, no problem. Um, okay. I'm excited to get started with the Tidy Tuesday, which I, I never did during my first round of this. So that'll, that'll make me work at it. Yeah, yeah this is yeah. a good yeah. opportunity. Uh, yes, I'm okay. planning to, to do so, but uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. So, I think I have to familiarize myself with the whole idea of what this Tidy <laughs> Tuesday is all about, but I, I think I'll catch up. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. so thank you all. Um, okay, so see you next week. Okay, see you next week. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.